The exhibition program here at this museum is really something built on years and years of investment by the community. I think there's a few very important critical moments in that history. One of the most important artists in the history of the 20th century, Mark Rothko holds a special place. We did a retrospective of his work uh, going back from his early pieces throughout his career. I think our exhibition program has been built off of artists such as Mark Rothko and some of those major moments that we showed him. Well, 20 is next. Mark Rothko, orange, red, yellow. And 24 million dollars starts. 24 million, 25 million, 26, 27 million, 28 million, 29 million, 30 million, 31 million, 32 million, 33 million, 45 million, 53 million, 56 million. Typically, for a high profile lot that we sell, you're looking at two to three minutes, would be sort of an average time frame. And for the Rothko, the bidding war lasted for seven minutes with over 50 bids made. 74 million. What's that? 75 million. 75 million. 77 million five. And selling to Brett Spitter, foul warning, all done at 77 million 500,000. Brett Spitter at 77 million. Not only was this sale the world record for the artist, at the time it was the most expensive post-war and contemporary artwork ever sold in the world. You see a painting of a hazy rectangle of color stacked on top of another hazy rectangle of color and you think to yourself, oh right, a Rothko, I know that guy. But do you know that guy? Why those hazy rectangles? And why should I care? This is the case for Mark Rothko. Rothko wanted to answer the big questions, and he was trying to find his own way to do that. Large, flat, misty areas of color started appearing in his paintings. The works became more and more reduced and simplified and geometric until he went completely abstract in 1947. By 1950, he had found his jam, and then he just kept on doing it. <laughs> Marcus Rothkowitz was born in 1903 to a Jewish family in Davinsk, Russia. They immigrated to Portland, Oregon in 1913, but his father died just months after. Marcus was a good student and won a scholarship to Yale, where he did well, but he dropped out in his second year and moved to New York. It was there he set his mind to becoming an artist and studied at the Art Students League under Max Weber and learned about Cubism and Matisse and the German Expressionists. 